So hello friends welcome to another episode of Dr Sachin's podcast and this time we are continuing our re- uh, discussion that started last week and it was about healthcare associated infections and this time we are covering one more important healthcare associated infection called cauti or catheter associated uti so welcome to the podcast on cauti in this podcast we are going to discuss in brief pathogenesis of cauti what are the risk factors involved in development of cauti what are the core prevention strategies that we can employ to reduce our cauti rates and what metrics that we can measure or what numbers we can monitor so that we can compare what is happening at our institution with the published literature so these guidelines are beautifully covered at uh, cdc's website and some of the slides that i am going to show you are from cdc's website So beginning with the pathogenesis of cauti what are the sources of microorganisms sources of microorganisms are two one is endogenous and second is exogenous where do the endogenous sources come from endogenous sources come from three locations first is meatal second is rectal and third is from vaginal colonization exogenous microorganisms usually come via contaminated hands of the healthcare personnel during catheter insertion or manipulation of the collecting system then sources of uh, this microorganisms can be extraluminal or intraluminal extraluminal means outside the catheter system if these sources come at the if these microorganisms enter at the time of insertion of catheter then cauti or catheter associated uti takes place early but if the organisms enter by capillary action that is suction then cauti appears late then sources of microorganisms can be intraluminal if there is break in the closed drainage or if there is contamination of the collection bag then formation of biofilms by urinary pathogens is common on the surfaces of the catheter and collecting systems bacteria within biofilms are resistant to antimicrobials and host defenses so biofilms are a problematic area and some novel strategies in cauti prevention have targeted biofilms in the picture which is a scanning electron micrograph it is seen that round spherical balls are staphylococcus aureus bacteria they are on the luminal surface of the indwelling catheter hmm? and you can see the interwoven complex matrix of extracellular polymeric substances known as biofilm so this is a picture of biofilm with staph aureus bacteria in the form of balls and these biofilms are problematic in that the bacteria in these uh, biofilms are resistant to antimicrobials and host defenses now coming to risk factors for cauti the risk factors highlighted in red are modifiable risk factors while those highlighted in orange might not be modifiable all the time so symptomatic uti or suti as it is called the risk factor is prolonged catheterization which we can take care of female sex older age and impaired un- immunity this might not be under our control but these are the risk factors for symptomatic uti or suti prolonged catheterization female sex older age and impaired immunity then only bacteriuria but not symptomatic uti the risk factors are disconnection of the drainage system and lower professional training of the inserter these two factors are modifiable and we can take care of these factors placement of catheter outside or and incontinence diabetes meatal colonization renal dysfunction and orthopedic and neurology services these are independent risk factors for bacteriuria now coming to core prevention strategies what we can do we can insert catheters only for appropriate indications we can leave catheter in place only as long as needed and not more we can ensure 
that only properly trained persons insert and maintain catheters. We can also see to it that we insert catheters using aseptic techniques and sterile equipment that is in acute care settings. Following aseptic insertion, we have to maintain a closed drainage system. We have to maintain unobstructed urine flow. Hand hygiene and standard precautions or appropriate isolation cannot be overemphasized. Continuing with the core uh, prevention strategies, of course, insert, inserting catheters for appropriate index, indication only is must, leaving catheter in place only as long as needed. We can remove catheters as soon as possible postoperatively, preferably within 24 hours, unless there are appropriate indications for continued use. Of course, we have to insert catheters using aseptic technique and sterile equipment. And following aseptic insertion, we have to maintain closed drainage system. Again, importantly, we have to maintain unobstructed urine flow. Then, after doing all this, we still need to monitor the COTI, the catheter associated UTI that is taking place in our healthcare settings. How we can monitor this? What are the metrics? The metrics include the number of COTI per 1000 catheter days. That is, we monitor the days irrespective of the patient and we monitor the quality that is taking place compared to those catheter days. And we can compare with the published literature how we are faring and whether we need to do anything more to bring our rates down. Then number of bloodstream infections secondary to quality per 1000 catheter days is again important bloodstream infection secondary to cauti so we need to do that uh, urine culture as well as blood culture so that we pick up the bloodstream infections then catheter utilization ratio that is urinary catheter days divided by patient days into 100 that again needs to be monitored that should be less so so these are some of the metrics that we can monitor and that will give us a picture regarding Corti in our institution. So we discussed pathogenesis of Corti. We discussed what are the risk factors involved in Corti. What are the preventive measures that are involved in prevention of Corti. And we also check the metrics that we can use for monitoring Corti. So hope this will focus our attention on Corti once again. And for more information, of course, there are sources on the internet like CDC's website which covers all these areas in much more details. For those who are interested, can check the CDC's website. So, it's time for me to now say goodbye. So, this is Dr. Sachin Kale signing off from his podcast. Thank you and see you again.